we have the first one, which is the inductive effect. So basically, what is inductive effect? Please put down. Inductive effect is the polarization of a bond caused by the polarization of an adjacent bond. Polarization of a bond caused by polarization of adjacent bond. So, it's very important for us to know that there are various ways questions can be asked. Right? The first one is that they can actually make this statement and they put dash. They say the polarization of a bond caused by polarization of an adjacent bond is dash. Now, what is polarization? Let me, let me give us an example. Let's say I have a bond like this, right? There are two things that can happen to a bond. It's either a bond is polarized or a bond is broken. If I break this bond, right, do something like this. Let's say maybe I have, let's use this. Let me say A and B. Let's use alphabet in place of element. This simply means that I'm breaking this bond such that the, each electron that made up the bone, one will stay on the A, one will stay on the B. That's why we have one head arrow. Another way a bone can be, that can affect a bone is, you do this. If you break a bone this way, you're going to form a free radical. Each bone contains two electrons, one on the left, one on the right. If you actually break it this way, this is what we call homolytic fusion. Such a way that the two electrons that makes up the bone are shared equally. One stays back with the A, the other one stays back with the B. So we're going to have A plus B. These guys are called free radicals. Now, the second case is a case where the bond, the two electrons, the bond is broken such that the two electrons that makes up this bond is pulled and placed on this B, where this double head are facing. So this is going to give us A plus B. Now, this part that the electrons were pulled to will become minus. This side that lost its electron will now become short. Plus. Now, this is bond breaking. What? This is um, bond breaking, or we call it bond fission. Now, the second way, so when we talk about polarization, what exactly are we referring to, to polarization? Polarization this time around you're not breaking the bond, right? You're pulling the electrons that two, that two of them were supposed to share, pulling it towards one side. I'll give you an example. Imagine two persons holding the end of a rope, right? And one side has more energy than the other side. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to pull the other guy, isn't it? So, would the rope cut? No. So if I have something like this, A, eh? Polarization, you see something like this. That means this B has more power or has more electronegativity to attract electron towards what? Itself. So when this happens, you see something like A, B, partial minus, partial plus. So anytime you see partial minus or partial plus, it simply means that the bond has been polarized. The side that has a minus means that that guy has pulled more electrons to itself the side that has a plus means that that guy has lost some electron to the other guy. In the case of this, this is bond fission. We broke this bond such that there is no longer a bond here. This is full minus. This is full plus. Why this guy is partial minus, partial plus. So in polarization and inductive effect, you're also going to be seeing this. Right? You're most going to be seeing this. So when we said Polarization of one bond caused by polarization of an adjacent bond. What do we mean? First, we need to understand polarization, which is this. Okay, so let's explain that guy. Please look up. If I have this, Now, between carbon and Cl, chlorine is more electronegative than carbon. Electronegativity is basically the ability of an atom to attract electron to itself. Chlorine is more electronegative than what? 
carbon. So basically, when both of them forms a bond, this guy will drag some of the electron that belongs to carbon to itself. So here becomes partial what? Minus. And here becomes what? Now, this in turn, this carbon will also drag from this guy. It's basically like a tug of war, right? If you have two sets of persons on one end of the rope, and you have two sets of persons on the other end, right? It's, let's assume one set is stronger than the other set. If you pull the rope, the first person will be affected much. The second person will also be affected. Even the third person will be affected, but it will not be as much as what? So now, this bond will be polarized as well. So this guy took electron from here. In turn, this guy will also do what? Take electron from here. So this becomes partial, double partial. That means the force here is lower than the force here. So this guy will now become, right? So it's going to continue. Now what caused it? That's why we said polarization of a bond caused by polarization of a what? That means something must have happened. This guy is the genesis of all of them. This guy happened that led to this guy being polarized, that led to this guy being polarized. But as a matter of fact, this effect dies off as it moves away. Right? You understand? So let's look at features of inductive effects. Features of inductive effects. Number one, it arises due to difference in electronegativity between two atoms forming a bond Also, it's a permanent effect. So now look at this. Please, right? It arises due to the difference in electronegativity between two atoms forming a bond. That already explained to us. Let's assume we have this. If I have this, inductive effects cannot take place here. Because the two elements forming these bonds are the same type of element. This is carbon, this is carbon, this is carbon. But if I come to this end, and maybe I put Cl here, Cl is chlorine. So chlorine is higher in terms of electronegativity than carbon. So because of this, definitely the value. This guy is going to pull the electron towards itself, causing these other ones to be polarized. Now it is transmitted through the sigma bond. Simply means that inductive effect is mostly seen in compounds that contain single bonds or true. Because all single bonds are sigma bonds. Now, for every double bond or triple bond, there is one sigma, right? So most compounds that exhibit inductive effects are compounds that contain just single bonds along their carbon chain. The magnitude of inductive effect decreases while moving away from the atom causing it. It's actually very possible. Just like I explained earlier, if I have this, if this will happen here, this guy, after pulling an electron from me, who is going to feel it the most is this next bond, right? So as you're moving away from this bond that is causing it, the value is in what? It's dying down. So now, how far will it go before for us to say it has died off? Now we said after the what? Third carbon. So we said inductive effect is greater for adjacent carbon. Now this is the adjacent, this is what is causing it, right? This is the adjacent carbon. So this guy is going to feel it towards the most. But it dies off after the what? The third carbon. So take note of that. So having said that, they can actually ask you questions in exam based on any of these features. The first one is to make this statement and they put dash. 
right? Polarization of a bone caused by polarization of an adjacent bone is dash. Answer is inductive effect. Or they could say, which effect arises due to the difference in electronegativity between two atoms forming a bond? Inductive effect. Which effect is transmitted to the sigma bond? Inductive effect. Which effect dies off after the third carbon? Inductive effect. So please take note of all of that. Now let's look at types of inductive effects. We have types. Inductive effects can be negative, inductive, or what? Positive. So, now, okay. Sigma bond basically are all single bonds. All single bonds in a compound are sigma bonds. Inductive effect is highly transmitted in a double bond. But double bond contains pi. This guy contains one sigma and one pi. Right? Inductive effect is mostly transmitted through the sigma. It's mesomeric effect that is transmitted through the pi. 